Hi everyone, for today's video, it's a Sonia G type of a video and I'm going to be talking about the base one, the smooth buffer and her two smudger brushes, the smudger one and the smudger two. Now, um, I do hope that the weather is going to cooperate. It's a bit cloudy today and I actually plan on doing like a demo and um, especially for the base one because um, I'm sure you guys have seen that I have been using this um, on some of my videos. Um, I got this back in February I think and I've been using it on and off for work also on myself and I actually kind of like it so I'm gonna talk about that in detail later and the bees are also quite busy today so I do apologize for that and one other thing I also have the smooth buffer with me and this is a relatively new arrival now I have been actually planning of putting this to work first and um, unfortunately because um, here in Metro Manila we're on lockdown again so I don't have that opportunity at all so for this particular brush on this video I'm going to be talking about it like some sort of like a first impressions and I'm also going to show you guys like what I'd use it for based on what I see in my head and also the other things Whoa! And I'm also going to be talking about the smudger brushes. There's going to be a little bit of a demo and I'm also going to give you my opinions about it. Alright, so let's start with the base one. And as you guys can see, it is part of her fundamental line because it is the one that has this very nice thick handle, which I actually love. So I wish all of her handles were like this because I really like the way that I'm able to grip on the handle of the brush effectively. Now, I still love the color. It still has that very nice lacquered red color that fades into the black here in between the black ferrule and the base. And the bristles is actually made of mixed fibers. So it is made of nylon mixed in with Sokoho goat hair. One thing that I do love about the brush head is that when it doesn't really bloom so much and it, re it relatively keeps its shape even after washing and when you are using it, which I really love. And it's quite dense and it's very resilient. It's very strong and it has a tendency of jumping back into shape after you've um, landed from the face. And I love the size of it. It's very small and compact and it can fit into a much more specific area of the face, especially if you are someone who just wants to put foundation on a specific area instead of putting it all over the face. Now, um, I have read on some reviews about this product that they didn't like it because they found um, this to create a very streaky kind of foundation application and I was really surprised with that because I didn't experience that at all and I was really thinking like oh maybe um, they loaded the brush with too much foundation because that's usually what happens when you load a brush with too much foundation it really becomes very streaky so I've loaded the brush head with a little bit of liquid foundation just to show you guys and I'm just patting it and buffing it into my skin and I don't see any streaking like even if I slide it this way and I mix it it's really not streaky at all which I actually love because um, just for comparison hang on a long long time ago um, the brush that I used to apply liquid foundation was my very old um, MAC is it the MAC 187 yeah, this is my very old MAC 187 and this is the brush that actually create a lot of streaking when I first apply like liquid foundation on the face so for example. You really can't see it because the foundation is almost the same um, tone as my skin and it really takes a while for me to blend in the foundation with using the very old MAC 187 brush and sometimes if you've loaded the brush with too much foundation um, you can really see the brush strokes on the foundation on the face and I do remember with this brush I was so frustrated with it because there was one time a senior makeup artist um, pointed that out to me she, and he told me like um, your brush strokes are very are seen um, on the face so you have to buff that out because the brush head here is very long in comparison to the base one see it's like almost half the length and um, that's the main reason why the very old MAC 187 brush um, appears to create a very streaky kind of foundation application on the skin and truthfully if it's a bit streaky I don't really find it because one of the best things about brushes from Sonia G is that 
as soon as you start buffing the product all over the face it starts to blend and mix immediately and I really love its size it's a very nice small compact size it can like it glides very easily under the eyes it's not painful it feels very silky and it doesn't drag on the skin it doesn't feel like it's pulling on the skin which I really like and just like that you can see it's blended very well and it's creating a very nice even and a smooth finish now I also love using the base one for cream foundations and we're going to do that now so I'm just going to remove any excess product on a microfiber towel here and I have here a mix of like two colors of cream foundations from MAC this is from their full coverage line and I'm just loading the product here at the very tips of the brushes and let's just buff everything It just really helps in helping you to blend the colors extremely well on the skin. It helps to create a very nice, flawless, smooth finish. And also one other thing is that some cream products can be quite heavy and it, um, like you know, it adds weight into the brush. And for some strange reason, the brush head of the base one can actually um, hold on to the weight that the cream foundation is putting on the brush and i really like that all right so as you guys can see on this side of my face is a very nice thinned out cream foundation application and on this side is a very thin out and well blended liquid foundation application now you can also use this brush in a stippling manner because it really doesn't hurt like there are some brushes that when you stipple product on if you want to create like you know a much more intense texture on the skin um, some of the fibers can be very painful but with this one there's a little prickly sensation but it's not uncomfortable all right and that's it very nice very even and it really helps to create that very nice flawless skin now i really do love the brush head on the base one because it can fit into like if you like cream blushes i also use this for cream blushes it can really fit into the bottle and it can just really help you to pick up the product um, this is like the matte the air matte blush from um, NARS this is an orgasm I don't really like this blush because um, I just find it too matte and I find the color to be a little bit too light but I just want to show you guys that the brush head can actually fit into the bottle and it can also help you in applying and spreading the blush in a stippling manner onto the skin well the main reason why I don't really like the air matte blush from NARS especially the orgasm is that it's too light and there are actually like gold flecks on it that um, when you start to buff the brush the flecks start to fly and you get shimmer in parts of your skin where you actually don't like to have um, shimmer so if you have products like that and if you like using cream blushes with a lot of specks of glitter on them using this brush in a tapping motion can really help in like you know infusing the pigment of the blush into the skin without letting all of the glitter fly out into the air let's try to balance it out here on the other side and i'm just pressing it lightly all right and just like that the air matte blush in orgasm disappears into my skin anyway now before i set everything with powder i would like to discuss first the smooth buffer because this is the first time I have this with me and this is what I'm going to use to set my face with powder now um, I do have to say that I still also love the color of the handle here very nice blue handle and um, I'm not a big fan of the tapering handle here the one that tapers into the very bottom but I do love the colors here and the handle on this the brush in general is actually much more lighter than in comparison to the base one now i still prefer the weight of the base one than the weight of the smooth buffer because um i'm very light-handed when i am holding my brushes so i have a tendency of actually like you know letting go of the brushes um when i'm working so i just have to make sure that i actually grip on the handle of this brush extremely well now I also do appreciate the brush shape and the brush head and um, I am not really a fan of um, kabuki flat top type of brushes because um, 
it's not something that I have been using ever since I started putting on makeup. But I do have to say that the brush head is very smooth. Like I can really feel it um, just gliding over my skin. And according to the description on this on Beautylish, um, this is actually a brush that will help you to apply powders in any formula um, onto the skin without actually disturbing the base that you have on your skin. But before we get into the application of powder on my face, let's compare the base one and the smooth buffer together. So side by side, we can see that the brush heads, the smooth buffer blooms more extensively than the base one. And I mean, that is great because with the smooth buffer, this is actually what helps to blend out the colors on the skin um, extremely well because, you know, a, a fluffier brush um, will always blend out colors extremely well on the skin. The flat top here, uh, when I see a brush like this, um, automatically I think that this is what I'm going to use when I want to pack on powder on the skin. And I would use this brush in a tapping motion just to create like the intensity and the opacity that I want on the skin. So I'm going to put this brush to the test and we'll see um, how it applies different kinds of powders in different kinds of formulas. And I'm going to start by setting my entire face using the smooth buffer loaded with powder. Okay, so this is just some loose powder. So this is how it looks like on the very top of the bristles of the smooth buffer. And I'm just going to tap it in the areas where I want to set the foundation and that instantly really toned down this shine and it created a very nice even coverage mm. okay so I have just realized right now that if you actually load the brush with a lot of powder it will pick up a lot of powder but let's see if that will um, actually create more texture than necessary but other than that it's looking quite great it's actually applying powder extremely well and if you're the type of person who wants to have more coverage with powder on the skin but you want to keep it light i think this is a very good brush to use all right so i just need to let's buff that out just so that we can remove any of the excess powder that's building up on the skin Okay, it's doing it very well. I don't see any streaking at all. So the description of this brush that it doesn't disturb your base is actually correct. Okay, so I'm just going to set the rest of my face with powder. Mm, this is great. So the powder looks very even on my skin. This is nice. This is great. This is promising. So at least I feel that this is actually worth it that I actually bought it because this brush was actually in and out of my cart on Beautylish. I was hot and cold with it because I wasn't really fully convinced because I did had a flat top kabuki type of a brush before and I didn't really use it much because it just picked up too much powder and when you apply it, it just created so much texture on the skin and that's really not the type of powder coverage that I want when I am working so I always prefer to use um, less powder on the skin because you know again I work in film and TV so we work for like 16 18 20 hours in a day and I really don't like to pack in so much powder so less is always more and this brush really applies a very nice layer of powder evenly on the skin all right so let's try this brush with this finishing powder here this is from the ambient lighting edit mini from hourglass and i love that it actually fits into the pan and it's almost the same size as the square and we have a very small amount of product here and let's just try to see on how well it applies the finishing powder mm. that's very nice let's try it here I'm just patting it in but this does the job of actually applying a very even amount of finishing powder mmm that's nice so let's just add some here and here hmm, not bad so it does work very well so my foundation is still there it's still even so that's great okay now let's try this blush here this is from the same palette and let's try to see how well it applies color. 
So I've just realized that now that the Smooth Buffer is actually a very resilient brush. It will actually pick up good amount of pigment from your product. So it's very obvious here with the blush, especially because this is like a, like a baked kind of a blush. So just be very careful. Okay, and I can also see that um, it's actually helping to blend the product out extremely well. So you can also use this for blush application. Mm. This is pretty. Okay, so before we move into a different type of powder, I'm just going to load the brush with loose powder here, and then I'm just going to buff it onto this microfiber towel so that the loose powder will just help to remove whatever color that was left of the blush here on the brush. So this is like a dry cleaning technique. And then whatever is left on the brush, I'm just going to press the loose powder so that we remove some of the shine here. All right, so that's quite beautiful, I have to say, don't you think? What do you think, guys? Please let me know down in the comments box. Okay, my door has been driving me crazy. Sorry if my face is too close to the camera. It's so windy right now. Like, I'm just so glad that it's not raining because it's been raining for more than two weeks here in the Philippines now. And I'm just so glad that I'm able to shoot something. All right, so what are we going to do now? So I actually do want to try this baked bronze powder from Laura Mercier. So I'm just going to swirl the brush here. And I'm so happy to say that it doesn't create product kick up. And the main reason why is because the brush head is made of dyed psycho wood hair. So it's very soft but dense. And if I use a Hakutotsuho um, haired makeup brush, it actually creates a lot of product kick up on the pan. But with this one, it didn't. So I am impressed. So this is like a bronzing powder. So this is what I'm going to like use today as like sort of like a finishing powder and I'm just buffing it in circular motions at areas where I want to add some warmth and depth. Okay, and I'm happy to say that it's actually doing extremely well. Okay, so I'm just going to tap that here into the cheekbones, the temple area, and blend it out. Okay, so I'm pressing the powder quite with a certain amount of pressure on my skin. And I'm so happy to say the brush head still keeps its shape, so that's very important. All right, so it's official. I like this brush because you can use it in a multiple number of ways with different types of uh, powder products. And it can give you this very nice diffused application on your face. Okay, before I move on, I just saw that I actually have my Guerlain Meteorites here. This is in golden. And let's try the brush with the Meteorites. So I'm just tapping the brush here. And I can see it's also able to pick up some of the powder. And let's just see if it can apply the powder well. I'm sure it will. It's leaving a very nice shiny finish on my skin. It's just also me helping to blend out the blush from Hourglass. And it's creating a very nice shiny dewy look on the skin. Mm. I love the smell of the Guerlain Meteorites all the time. Okay, so not bad, not bad at all. So my judgment of this brush stands. Okay, so let's talk about now the smudger one and the smudger two. Um, I'm not gonna go into great depth with this because, especially with the smudger one, because this actually fell. I can't remember where it actually fell and how it fell that the lip of the ferrule here actually dented and when that happened, it actually changed the shape of the brush head. But I'm just so glad that I was actually able to press the tip of the ferrule here and I was actually able to flatten it out a bit but I think that has changed the shape of the brush head but I think not as much but I can see right now that it's just actually much more tapered to a much more not sharper point but to a flatter point at the very edge but I still love using this though um, I use this when I just want to apply like to say a very thin layer of eyeshadow at the very base of the lashes so I just press the color all over the lash line and that's it. Now I actually make sure that I load the color of the eyeshadow at the very tips of the bristles here 
and then I just like really um, smudge it close to the lash line as possible and I really love doing that because like you know this is made of very soft um, undyed Zycoho hair and as I said before in one of my videos that my smudger brushes that I use are still the, like the ones that I used from like 15 years ago and it's actually much more painful on the eyes now okay and if I want to diffuse it further I just like you know lay the brush at an angle and I just drag it so that whatever product is there left on the br on the brush head it just diffuses the color extremely well and extremely fast now I also like using this on my lower lash line like you know just to create intensity I do not feel any prickling sensation especially when I tap the brush on my lash line which I do appreciate and if I want to extend that I can just like you know use this brush and it really helps to extend the color but in a much more diffused manner and I can also use that to connect it on my upper lash line just to create one color harmony on the eyes now the smudger 2 in comparison to smudger 1 the brush head is actually much more smaller and it appears to be denser than the smudger 1 now the smudger 2 I like actually to use this when I want to diffuse eyeliner on the eyes like if I I still use cake eyeliners by the way and I love using this for cake eyeliners and I'm just so glad that this is made of um, undyed goat hair because it's going to be much more easy to clean and the other types of eyeshadow products that I like using the smudger 2 for is um, cream eyeshadow sticks and the color that I have loaded here is the color plum and I'm just going to smudge that across the lash line Okay, so I'm just removing the excess and I'm just using this brush in very light strokes and I'm just buffing it. Okay, I changed the angle of how I hold the brush in a much more like at a 45 degree angle from my eye and then I just brush up the product just so that it blends it out and then if I want to add more detail I got the smudger one and then I load the product at the very tip of the smudger one and I can add that here in the inner corner and I can also oops and I can also use this to create a very nice gentle flick here in the outer corner of my upper lash line and I'm just going to connect that into my upper lash line And that's that very easy to use and very easy to handle now um, as I've said earlier I actually smashed the smudger one and I don't think I'm going to buy a replacement brush for this because to me it still looks like I can still use it and um, truthfully I just find that the brush heads of Sonia G smudger brushes to be a little bit too big for my comfort because my favorite smudger brush the one that I've been using way 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 like at least 15 years ago is my very old smudger brush from Laura Mercier so if we look at the brush head here it is a very small brush head now I really love using this brush because um, it can help me pick up very dense eyeshadow products and it can just really help me to press the product into the lash line I can feel now how comfortable Japanese eyeshadow makeup brushes are, are on the eyes while well, this one um, it gives me a it's not painful but it's like it gives me a very uncomfortable sensation now on my eyes so I really thought that it was um, time to um, change this because I've been using it for far too long but yeah so I do have other um, smudger brushes on my kit so this is from Hakuhodo this is from Chico Hodo from the Soiree series and this is from Chico Hodo and this belongs to the FO series now um, the only thing that I have problems with these brushes is that they appear to have longer bristles especially both the Chico Hodo brushes in comparison to the Hako Hodo the Hako Hodo it's almost the same size as my Laura Mercier but the bristles are just longer so I wish so I'm still on the hunt actually of finding a smudger brush 
which is um, almost the same size as my very old smudger brush from Laura Mercier. So if you guys have any recommendations of a smudger brush that has the same design as this very old Laura Mercier smudge brush, please let me know down in the comments box and I'm going to go check it out. All right, so those are my recent purchases of brushes from Sonia G. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys have any questions about the brushes that I use today, please leave them down in the comments box below and let's have a conversation about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're having a good day wherever you are. Bye. Wow, the smooth buffer brush really helps in creating a very nice even finish all over the skin. I still can't get over it. This is great.